Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Who comedian Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Welcome to Frank Prince Show. I'm your host, Frank Prince. Little update of what went on last week. I want to thank Tom, Tom Mealy and Tommy Moore from Madhouse Reality TV. Thank you for being on my show. I want to mostly thank all the viewers for watching. I want you to feel part of my show. And thank you. I love you all. And today we have special guest comedian Phil O'Reilly. <laughs> Say hello. Frank. Oh, hello. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's Frank, right? Yeah. Thanks so. for having me. Bald headed motherfucker. Hey. Don't say anything <laughs> about you, Frank. Frank, you do me a big favor, put me on, get me away from my wife. A rainy day like this, you got to be desperate to get away from her. And I'm just desperate. She was on me again this morning, but hey, I don't want to talk about my wife because I said I wouldn't talk about her for at least five minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank All you right, for yeah. being. Do I got to mention the prison time? Sure, yeah. Okay. Have to well, I was innocent. I was innocent, but they let me out. I'm gone now. I tried to kill my father twice, uh, both times unsuccessful. He's dead now. I'd be out, I'd be out now, and uh, probably would have got a parade. Dorothy got a parade. She killed that witch. My father didn't deserve to live. But hey, Father's Day's coming up, so. Uh, you want me to just rattle? No, I'm going to ask you questions, okay. too. What happened you know. was, uh, I used to do stand-up over 30 years ago, and I quit because I couldn't take, uh, I got the flop sweat like Dangerfield would bitch about. I got that real bad. Uh, I got physically sick. Uh, it just wasn't a natural thing for me to do, and I quit. And it was, it just never left me. And then, um. Uh, I was working as a chauffeur. I was a chauffeur for a long time. I, I raised a family, a wife and a family. And um, I got a blood clot in my leg, and I had to quit work. Long Island Jewish, and the doctor, you know, you love these doctors. He said, you don't want to get another one, you know, like that one. Like, oh, come on. He said, no, you don't want to get another one. So there was a whole scene, like, uh, in the movies with my wife on the gurney with the bucket list. And I told her at the time that um, before I die, I want to try stand-up comedy. And she said, be quick about it. So um, that was seven years ago. And up until that time, marriage, uh, I never mentioned this. It was just something in the back of my head uh, that I wanted to do, but it was just buried back there, you know, along with, you know, wearing women's, women's clothing and uh, homosexual tendencies. But it was just, and I just, and I was, uh, and I've been doing it ever since. And it's, I have nothing else to fall back on. You know, I'm retired. Uh, I'm on a fixed income, so I, it is an advantage because so many people start do this and quit because uh, it doesn't generate any income. And there is a roller coaster life you live. You do well, you do well, you do well, you do terrible, and and there's no middle ground there. And uh, you have no uh, support system. You come home and you say, you know, what is it? You know, two and two is ten. It just doesn't work. And then the next time you go on somewhere, you don't even try, and it works well. And, and lately I've been getting paid to do comedy, which is just, you know, you do it for free, and then you get paid to do the same thing, and it's easier than when you do it for free. So it just doesn't add up. And, uh, but I just, it, it, I, start, I always quote The Godfather. You know, the movie, the book, and, and it was, it's the life you chose. How was that? Huh? <laughs> it's the life you chose. And so I keep saying that to myself. You know, I chose to do this, so what am I complaining about? I go in these clubs, and minimum, uh, 
uh, guys are half my age. And they talk about things I don't even know about. You know, I'm not even familiar with, like video games. I don't know what they're talking about. The gist, the angst, the bitch about people my age is that we speak the language, but we don't understand what the hell they're talking about. This, this is one lately with me, and it's search engine. I've heard search engine. I didn't even know one was missing, you know? I didn't know what the hell people were talking about. And, and I have a 23-year-old daughter, and I, you know, she just does the rolls the eyes thing. And uh, I, look, no, it won't help me at all. Uh, my wife just got the iPhone, and I swear it's like, a, it's like her own private vibrator, right? I mean, she sleeps with this damn thing. She wakes up with this damn thing, and she, then she's, you know, that one where she's talking, and she's just doing this and looking at you, and she's not, you know, my ego dictates, I want your attention. If I'm going to talk to you, I want your attention. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And, uh, and, and, but she, uh, anyway, uh, I'm here, Frank. <laughs> I see that. You're venting. Uh, it's that's you see that's one of the advantages of stand up. You can just right. do that. It doesn't cost you much money, and you can just let it out. A, you got a bitch. You got a complaint. You just go into a club and you let it out. And sometimes it's funny. Uh, sometimes they let you out. They say, get out of here, man. But it uh, there are there are advantages. For instance, you know those people you know who will always say, "Hi, how are you?" They don't just say hi, right. they say, hi, how are you? And I always say, terrible. And sometimes they listen, but a lot of, most times they don't. They don't care. You know, hi, how are you? Terrible. And why are you terrible? Ah, it's my wife. And I just start doing a routine in front of them, right? They don't know me from Adam, right? Hi, how are you? Terrible. Why are you terrible? Ah, my wife, she's making me crazy. <laughs> she's making me crazy. I'm doing the old, uh, you know, those uh, balls in my hand and just, just choke her, you know, right? And why do you want to choke your wife? Ah, she's just. It's just, yeah, yeah. How much time you got? And they're gone. And they're gone out of your life. But it isn't that high. You know, I hate that high Hawaii. The other one is take care. Take care sucks, okay? I mean, it, it, somebody, you don't, like, like, nobody told me to take care to come out here in this damn rainstorm, right? And take care stinks. I, I say, I'll take care if you take gas, okay? Is that too cruel? No? Not bad. <laughs> You've been down that road? <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, I'm 67 years old. I, um, uh, I was born in Manhattan. I grew up in Queens. Um, uh, my son of uh, Irish immigrants. Um, both my parents have passed away. Uh, I have a 23-year-old uh, daughter, and I have a Cuban wife. It's sort of like the uh, Desi Lucy thing, but in reverse, right? I'm the Desi one, and, and she's... Uh, she was a communist, uh, you know. I married a communist, and uh, and she, everything is a it, there's a there's always a conspiracy to get her to get everybody she knows all the time. And cuidado is the expression mean in Spanish, meaning watch out, be careful, watch out. I wasn't allowed to mail letters at this bank at, at this mailbox on the corner because that's the one they blow up. Don't mail you. I said, well, if this happens so often, I probably won't be mailing my you know, letters at that mailbox since it won't be there. No, no, no. It's, uh, and sh and so it's, it's one thing after the other. You don't mention Castro, don't mention Fidel Castro because that's the rest of the day. You're not going to talk about him and, and how much he hates him. And blah, blah, blah. Every Thanksgiving and Christmas, we've got to sit through this. Great people, great food, great garlic. Irish food sucks. Uh, <laughs> Cuban food is great. And the first restaurant we went to was on a... Cuban restaurant on our first date. And uh, I'm still married, 23 years, but I'm bitching. But sh she's a great woman, but she just, you know, at times, I want to choke her. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quit laughing back there. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's it. Well, how much do I owe you? Dollar <laughs> <laughs> three eighty. When did you get more aggressive with comedy? I got more aggressive about, uh, well, I guess Frank wasn't listening, right? Uh, I got more aggressive uh, when I got this blood clot in my leg and I had to quit working because I had a job. You know, most people that do comedy also have a job, and it's tough doing the two because uh, comedy is a nighttime job. And uh, you go back to your daytime job, and, uh, and then you go to the nighttime job, and you get no sleep. 
Uh, it's people that have to quit the regular job and just do this that chances are become successful or just go bankrupt and just, you know, assume another identity and you know, leave the country. Uh, lots of people like that. I've, and, I, and I've ran into a lot of comedians who quit, and um, I'm not saying this to pump myself up, but were as good or better than me and just could not take it anymore. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, they're the, the funniest guy in the neighborhood or the funniest guy at work, and, 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 and they do it for a while and they quit. So I've been at it for seven years, and um, I'm finally getting some success. I had a job last week where I got paid, which was a shock. Now I have an agent, and yesterday I got a letter in the mail that I was accepted at this comedy festival in Cape May, New Jersey, and I literally broke down and started crying, okay? I right. called my wife up. She thought I was in a car accident. I could not believe that this actually happened, and that this was the furthest from my mind that uh, you know this was actually going to happen. I, I wrote it off. You know, you got to send in like twenty, thirty dollars and send in a video. Just to send in a video is almost I don't want to say impossible, but close to impossible to me because I just don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, and there's nobody there to tell me how to do it, right? You know, it's myself and my wife. My daughter moved out. She's living with a guy in Brooklyn, and they're not playing checkers, you know what I mean? There's something going on there. I met him, and that is really odd. What do you say to the guy who's living with your daughter? I don't know. What do you say? There's, I couldn't, what do you have in common? Well, you don't want to talk about that, right? But what do you have in common? You don't want to mention it. And, hey, how you doing? And you know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's no self-help book. There's no uh, parenting book that explains this situation. And I've met him a few times now, and I just, but she's happy. So that's, that's the deal. It's my only child. I only did it one time. Okay, I did it one time and I hit a home run. She's a beautiful <laughs> kid and uh, and she, she loves this guy, you know. It's not about me, but uh, uh, she says she's happy, so I, you know, I back off, and that's uh, that's the hard part, you know, when you're parenting, you you got to back off, because you, you still want her to want to communicate with you when when you're old like you, Frank, when you're old <laughs> and uh, 67. I'll be dead soon. And, uh, it's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. But it's it's keeping my mind nimble doing this, you know, because I work on these routines, and your office is in your head. Uh, there's no one there to dictate to me when I should be working because I'm retired. So uh, uh, it, it I have no there's no clock to punch. There's there's nobody to tell me you well you should be in more clubs more often. You should be trying this or trying that. My wife won't come see me because she's so easy to pick on. I can't have her in the audience because I'll just just attack her, okay? You know, and my daughter won't go near any of the stuff I did. For instance, my daughter approached me one day, <clears throat> said she wanted to have a talk with me. And I said, uh-oh, what does that mean? She's pregnant, right? No, worse. She didn't want to take any more bubble baths with me. I said, what? She said, I didn't, no, no more bubble baths, Dad. I said, what? I just spent $4,000 elongating the tub, you know, Saturday night, Saturday night, right? She says, no, it's over. I said, what do you mean it's over? It's been a tradition in my family for the past 17 years, and now no more bubble baths, right? I said, I'm sweating, right? She says, no, it's over. I said, well, I'll wear a bathing suit. I'll do it sober. I can't do that joke anymore. My daughter would just walk out of the room, right? And it's my daughter. And, you know, who do you want to hurt? You don't want to hurt your kid. Uh, my wife, um, Cuban jokes. I can't do Cuban jokes. You, you know, when you live with somebody and you could pick on that person before you've even gotten out of bed, okay? My father was an expert at this. He could just he character assassinate anybody 
any time, day or night. And you just realize that you have to control that because you're going to make a lot more enemies and friends after a certain period of time in your life. Because you can pick on people and do the dozens, or do the put downs, and you can verbally get out of a problem that you might have gotten yourself into for the same reason. Uh, but um, you get to a point in life where you realize you're hurting the people you love, and so I just don't pick on my wife as much as I used to, but I still pick on her once in a while. You still here? Yeah, I'm still okay. here. All right. What do I owe you? We're going to go take a break. We'll be right back. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. We're back. Well... This is Phil O'Reilly. Same now, guy. Same guy was here earlier. Now, you're the sit-down comedian. Now I'm going to have to ask you to stand up and do your act. You ready for me, Tommy? Will you stand up for us and do your act? Is that right? How was that? That's pretty good, huh? Beauty. I, I got this jacket uh, at the Salvation Army, $15, okay? I'm a classy guy. Um, my name is uh, Philip Patrick O'Reilly. My friends call me PP. <laughs> you love those people, right? I'm the uh, proud son of Irish immigrants. Uh, grew up in Queens, um, Queens Grammar School, Queens High School. I went to prison in Queens, but I, we don't talk about that, right? I um, uh, let's see. I'm um, I'm an ex-altar boy in recovery. When I was an altar boy, I molested these two visiting Polish priests. Not proud of that. I didn't know they were Polish. I'm supposed to know they're Polish. Uh, difficult childhood. I was abandoned by the circus. Uh, not easy. I, um, I like it rough. Anybody here? I like it rough. Uh, I put out. I give it up. Um, I don't care. I mean, post-its. I don't care what you want to give me. I'll give it up. Um, Likes my women's like I likes my deodorants, uh, old and spicy. <laughs> Had my colonoscopy. I know I can relate to this audience. Had my colonoscopy. Um, the results, uh, they found my head. <laughs> I, um, I married. My wife is Cuban. She says she's Cuban. I don't know. Uh, 
know, she could be from New Jersey. I don't know where she's from. The attraction was she had a beautiful beard, uh, you know, uh, inner tube thing. Um, um, she's a communist, what can you say? She's a commie. And uh, we're married 23 years. Uh, somebody was asking me, what's that like? And I said, well, the first couple of weeks just flew by. In fact, the first two weeks, I thought it was more like 10 days, but it was actually two weeks. It's just, it's amazing. Um, I um, married, uh, married men, I recommend this one product. It's called Salon Paws. It, uh, it'll help the pain. It's sold over the counter in all drug stores. Salon Paws says, on the packaging, apply the Salon Paws on the source of your pain. I waited till my wife was asleep. My uh, daughter's name is Enemy Combatant. Uh, she's, uh, she's uh, yeah, I'm not taking any more bubble baths, but uh, uh, she's a great kid, but she's not talking to me anymore because uh, it, she basically thinks I'm stupid. Uh, you know, the, big, uh, the biggest thing is uh, that I don't understand what I'm doing with the Internet, and uh, she has no patience with me, and she, she went to that school of uh, I'm going to roll my eyes and you're a jerk. But the best thing she did before she left, she found a dog and brought her home. She rescued a pit bull and now we have a pit bull dog. Uh, her name is Molly and uh, she's a great dog and here's the dumb things people say to you when you're out walking the dog. I go into the park and it has a section just, uh, you know, uh, dog run. The first time this happened to me, I was, uh, it just rained, and we were the first ones in the park. And we're just sitting there in the dog run, and the guy walked up to me, and he actually said this. He said, excuse me, sir, is that your dog? And I looked at him, and I said, I'm thinking, what? He said, is that your dog? I said, no, we meet here. <laughs> <laughs> what made you assume that that was my dog? Just because I have her on a leash and she's attached to the leash and I'm attached to the other end of the leash. Like they rent dogs, you know, like you can rent dogs in this neighborhood. I know guys, you know, like have dogs just because they want to pick up women. But, you know, like I, I got plenty of women because I'm a player. Players got plenty of women. I don't need no more women, right? One, one guy asked me, uh, how many women you got? I said, in this country? Because I got women. I don't need any more women. Uh, I'm well over 50. And here's the 11th commandment. For men over 50, 3 a.m. you got to go, okay? 3 a.m. you got to go, a light goes off in your head, and, uh, and you got to go. You don't want to go, but you got to go. You stumble, you get out of bed, and you're going, and your wife rolls over, and here's what your wife says, and this happens every single day. Here's what my wife says. Where are you going? Where are you going? I mean, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, and I'm wearing socks, a box of shorts, and a T-shirt. Uh, what do you think I'm going? Like 24-hour bowling? Uh, where could I possibly go in at that moment? Right? I mean, there's only one answer to that, right? It isn't like I joined the Bolivian Army, and I didn't, you know, hadn't corresponded with you. But what I like to say is, where am I going? I'm going into the kitchen because I'm going to sharpen a knife. Too cruel? No, not too cruel? Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, we, uh, you know... In my, my wife is very good, you know, uh, to me. What she does is she lets me go out and, and relive my fantasies by going into these clubs at night. And the thing is, come home sober and don't have any perfume on your, you know, uh, you know smell attached to you, right? So I got to change clothes sometimes, you know, bring some sanitizer with me. But uh, uh, and I'm not getting any women coming my way. I did. I thought I got to come on once at the bank. You know, when you, you reach a certain age and women just look right through you. But you, I got to come on at the bank. At least I thought I got to come on at the bank. Because the bank tellers will give you that 10 seconds of love. And uh, it happened to be a female, which was an advantage. Because um, I'm into heterosexuality. So she, she says, you know, I, I was bringing a $100 check to cash. And she looked me dead in the eye and she said, how do you like it? And I thought, oh, man. <laughs> kind of services this bank has. <laughs> wow, how do I like it? I mean, she just <laughs> caught me. Uh, oof, oof. And, I mean, you get asked that when you're ordering eggs, you know, and uh, how do I like it? Uh, I said, and there's people behind me, and I'm like, crowding up on the top. 
How do I like it? Uh, I said, do you have a trampoline here? I right, wouldn't have a trampoline in the bank. You have a twin sister? <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's, uh, it was, you know, I said 50-50. How's that? Just make it a 50-50. It, uh, it didn't happen as I, as I anticipated it would. Uh, big family. Uh, you remember that movie, um, Who's Afraid of a Junior Wolf? You remember that, Frank? Anybody? They had movies then. They did have movies then. <laughs> it was a famous play. It was a famous book. And it was a famous movie. Liz, uh, Liz Taylor and uh, Richard Burton. Mm -hmm. I'm the only guy. Well, let me tell everybody what this is about. Anyway, um, there's a scene in that movie that we, we relived in my family growing up every Saturday night because my father played a game with anybody who came over to visit and in the movie, it was called Get the Guests, where you just picked on people who showed up at your house. And my father would have a couple of pops in him, and, uh, and he would start picking on people who ever showed up. And everybody in my family was good at this. Uh, everybody could just pick on people all damn day with no effort at all. And I had to just control that because uh, it was jeopardizing my relationship with my wife, and that's... You know, that's, you know, I can bitch all day, but that's, that's major. That's what's keeping me going. Uh, I wouldn't be here today with you, Frank. If it wasn't for my wife. <laughs> you heard enough? Fair enough. Okay. And thank you. That concludes our show. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll be back next week, same time, 1 o'clock. Have a great week. And we'll see you then. Thank you.